Item 6.5, consideration of resolution to authorize the county administrative County Administrative Officer to, on behalf of the library, submit a grant application acceptance and execution of grant funds from the State of California Budget Act of 2021 SB 129. And so I'll give this over to CAO Hutchinson and, or actually Christopher Veach. Yes. I see him on. Christopher, the floor is yours. Hello, thank you. Yes, I'm Christopher Veach, the County Librarian. Thank you for. Um, entertaining this motion today. I just have a short slideshow to help explain this item. I can share my screen, I think. Yes, okay, so um, I'm here before your board today to adopt a resolution to authorize a grant application to the State Library Building Board Grant Program. And what this program is for is for critical life and safety infrastructure projects at our library. Applications may be submitted by the county on behalf of the library, which is one of the reasons I'm presenting this to you today. And grant funds are provided from the State Library through the Budget Act of 2021 and are highly competitive. And so these are state funds and they do require a dollar for dollar match Applicants may apply for a match reduction based on their local operating income per capita level, which um, for us, we are in the bottom 20% of the state and we can request a 50% reduction. So it's important to note that that reduction can be denied, but we do hope that it would be approved as we're in the bottom 20% of the state for our local operating income per capita level. And so I wanted to give you some background on our current library branches to help explain the projects that we're doing. So here are all four of our library branches and the dates they were constructed. Lakeport is one of our older branches and, went, and was constructed in 1986. Clear Lake, the Redbud Library was constructed in 1995. Middletown is our newest branch, which was finished in 2013. And Upper Lake is our historic branch and was finished in 1916. So for all these projects that I'm going to talk about, um, I worked really closely with Lars Ewing, our public services director, to identify these projects at each of our branches. So we will be submitting four applications, one for each branch, but there are items that are in every application. So for all libraries, we're focusing on staff and building safety as is required by the funding. Um, one of the first items for all branches would be air filtration improvements to help combat wildfire smoke and provide better indoor air quality at our library branches. We also want to apply for a camera, sec camera security system and locking doors for all staff areas for better building and staff security and an automated building control system that would enable key systems in the building be controlled remotely in case of emergency or evacuation. And then for our three largest branches, Lakeport, Redbud, and Middletown Library, we'll be applying for a solar backup power generation system that would provide power when, the, when, the, when our PG&E connections are cut or, or go out. And that would enable the libraries to continue operating safely during power outages. And then specifically at the Middletown Library, we would be, um, we want to improve the entryway to the library so it's more wheelchair accessible. Right now, there is a wheelchair accessible button that opens the automated doors to the entire facility, but there isn't one for the library itself. So that, that's the main focus there. And then we also want to improve our circulation desk, which is currently isolated from other staff areas. That's the main customer service point and right now it requires staff to turn their back to the main library area and also they can't move to staff areas easily. And then at Lakeport, um, we would be looking at a replacement of the Lakeport library roof to provide a, a secure roof for the next 30 years. We'd also be addressing um, the fire alarm system, fire sprinkler system, and emergency lighting. 
None of those are what we would hope them to be right now. There is not currently a fire alarm system at the Lakeport Library, and there isn't a fire sprinkler system either to suppress fire or to break out in, into, inside the library. Also, we are applying for water and waste system upgrades to make sure those systems keep going for years to come. So altogether, the current project cost estimate that we'd apply for is $1.6 million. The grant funded portion would be $1.2 million and the required match would be $412,375. And that match would be um, most likely needed from the general fund and I could let Stephen Carter or Carol Hutchinson speak more to that. So what we're asking for the board to do today is to um, adopt the resolution to authorize the county administrative officer to, on behalf of the library, submit a grant application, acceptance, and execution of grant funds from the State of California Budget Act of 2021. And I'm happy to answer any questions from the board about this grant application. Thank you, Mr. Veach. Are there any questions for, for him? Vice Chair Scott? No questions. Just thank you, Christopher, for going after these grants. There's a lot of work to do to make sure that we're maintaining our libraries and not taking money from other areas. So thank you for looking and, and finding the, these monies. I think um, we, we definitely need to be um, making sure that we're looking outside of Lake County to bring money in to um, support our infrastructure. So I definitely support this. Supervisor Sabatia. And I don't know if uh, CAO Hutchinson or Mr. Carter was going to speak on uh, where the funds for the uh, 400 odd thousand dollars would come from. Uh, just wanted to at least listen to that to be able to understand how we would be able to uh, pay for that. And Mr. Chair, I'll yield to Mr. Carter. I asked him to be present to address that question. Good morning, board. So to answer that question, it would be generally the fund balance available, so what you would consider the carryover. So each year we have a carryover of unused revenues that go towards like new roofs or other infrastructure projects, what we call the extraordinary request from the department that is then approved from the now considered one-time monies. And this would be one of those projects that would utilize that funding and no um, so it would be out of regular general fund, not cannabis or anything like that. Supervisor Sabatia. Uh, so my question is, have we used all of the PG&E money that we, uh, not PG&E money, but money that we received from the uh, state budget for PSPS purposes for like uh, generators and things like that? So the full, there is one remaining and that's the fiscal year 2019 PSPS from Cal OES. And that was $366,000 that is fully allocated to the geo generator project, which is going to be about 515,000. Um, it has not been fully spent, but it is being spent and it is supposed to be spent. The full amount is scheduled to be utilized before the end of the grant. Okay, I, I figured as much. And then what about in the uh, potential for, uh, I know we have a meeting on the 23rd coming up, is there potential for ARPA funds to be utilized for this? Uh, just for the fact that our library has been such an important uh, setting for COVID-19, for people to access uh, computers, to be able to access information. Uh, just kind of curious if that's something that it might be able to fit into and, and brought to that committee for a conversation. So I was not prepared to answer that direct question, but yes, I believe it probably should be. And at that time, we can talk as a committee on whether it fits the criteria. That it is a very possible other source of revenue instead of general fund. Other than that, I'm absolutely in favor and I appreciate the effort to look for the, these kinds of funds. We have to make sure that our buildings remain uh, safe and strong enough to uh, last much longer than just till next year. Uh, so absolutely want to see us uh, rebuilding and, and making sure our infrastructure for our buildings are safe and sound. Thank you. Supervisor Simon. Yeah, I, you know, obviously support this issue too, uh, Christopher. Thank you for bringing this. Um, 
I know the, the general conversation on where the funds are going to be coming from, we'll, we'll continue to have those. But I know um, in each of our districts, we do have some cannabis funds that we have. So for District 1, obviously, with the Middletown Senior Center, you know, I would say uh, some of those discretionary funds, this would be a perfect project in, in my area as we go on with discussion. So uh, completely supported, and uh, it's a vital opportunity for folks to mingle and communicate, and we're getting back to that. So in complete favor of getting this grant application in. All right. Anything else from the board? I'm opening it up for the public input. Is there anybody in the room that would like to do it? Mr. Chair, Stephen has his oh, hand. Oh, sorry, Stephen, I didn't see that. Okay. Go ahead, Stephen. Well, if we're going to talk about cannabis funding, I do want to appreciate Moke's comments, but there is actually $1 million specifically set aside for deferred maintenance, which all of this would easily fall under. So appreciate it, Moke. Supervisor Moke, sorry. But that would be the source we would um, pull it from if we did go down the cannabis route. Which means you can reserve your discretionary fund for other discretionary projects. Okay. All right. Sure. Just putting it out there. <laughs> Thanks for noting that. All right. So I will, uh, again, open it up to public input. It looks like we have someone in the room that wants to come up and speak. Yeah, come up to the microphone, and you'll have three minutes to... Uh, Give your insight on this topic. Can you hear me, board? Uh, yes, I do support this issue as well because it's needed for future generations to come. Thank you. Could you state your name for the record, please? Uh, Kitchen Thomas. Thank you. All right. Is there any other public input? I don't see any uh, in. in the chambers and uh, in the Zoom room neither. So bring it back for the board to the board for action. Mr. Chair, offer the resolution. Resolution has been offered. Johanna, can you conduct a roll call, please? All right, Supervisor Simon. Yes. Uh, Supervisor Sabatier. Aye. Supervisor Scott. Aye. Supervisor Paiska. Yes. And Supervisor Crandall. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher, very much for your presentation and good luck with this grant process. Thank you. There's also a B. I didn't know if we needed to address that as well. Oh, you know what? To I... authorize the county administrative officer to provide a letter to the granting entity, entity verifying the availability of matching funds. That would help make our application more competitive. Okay. Let me see. In the yes, Mr. Chair, and I've already drafted that letter with hope that you would authorize me to send it based on this discussion. Okay. Yeah, you, you know, if the grant, once the grant is funded, we would come back to you for the actual appropriation for your approval of that. Um, but today, we need to um, send a letter along with the grant application indicating that the that funds will be available for this when that time comes. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to submit, um, or let's see. It's not moving. Um, to grant oh, to authorize sorry. the county administrative officer authority to send a letter to the state advising of matching fund availability for this project. So moved. Second. Thank you. The resolution was already approved. Supervisor Sabati. Just had a quick question before we get to the vote. At maximum, if it's a perfect match, it would be approximately $800,000? That's correct. Okay, so we're hoping that it's approved so that we can drop it down to that 400 odd amount of, of, of thousands of dollars. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. So I do have a motion in a second, right? Um, but I didn't get a chance to public input for this item of the letter, so I'm going to open it up for public input on the letter briefly before we move forward with action. And I'm not seeing anybody coming up to the microphone or on Zoom. And so I'll bring. Somebody with their hand up. Oh, there is somebody. I'm sorry. Come back up and. Uh, Provide some insight on this uh, support letter. Kitchen Thomas. Um, so um, no insight, just going to support the CEO Hunchy Hutchinson to go ahead and draft it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. With that, uh, we'll close public comment and bring it back to the board with our motion to and second already intact. And we will, uh, if you can conduct a roll call for me, please. All right. 
Supervisor Simon. Yes. Supervisor Sabatier. Aye. Supervisor Scott. Aye. Supervisor Paiska. Yes. And Supervisor Crandall. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. It was on the uh, recommended action where it said B. So that's where I didn't see it on the agenda, but I seen it on that. So thank you. We got that. All right.